Well, it's good, Liberators. Fingus here. This is DX2 Demon Review. Today, we're talking about everyone's second favorite big mouth. The Devourer. The Tyrant. Dimensional. Abaddon. Lord of the Abyss in the Book of Revelation. The source of evil and cause of plagues. He leads the seventh order of demons who appear at the sounding of the fifth trumpet on Judgment Day. When he will command a horde of locusts wreaking havoc and suffering. His name means destroyer and endless pit and even considered to be the abyss itself. Very cool. A very cool design, though I do like our original Abaddon's design just a, just a little bit better. As for stats, it's a four-star demon. Comes with four-star stats. The most impressive of which is his vitality and his strength, both coming in at 181 baseline, but you can pump those up as you see fit, though I would highly recommend you focus on his agility stat because it comes in at 66. And this guy, he's a physical guy, so that means his accuracy is garbage. And also, you want to pump that agility up as high as possible because he, he's a PvE kind of guy. You don't want to, he's useless in PvP. Don't even, don't even consider it for him. But I still use this guy in Alter World physical farming, in Brands of Sin farming, and he is, without a doubt, one of the kings in that regard because of his unique set of skills. But for those to, to really shine, you need to be going first in your farming efforts. Well, not in Alter World, but in Brands of Sin, you really want to be going first. And that 66 agility is going to be a, a drain on your efforts. So I would recommend pumping that agility up to the max. 20 strength, 10 vitality, 20 agility. I think it's a really, really good spread. As for the stats, I think... I think he uh, resists or nulls physical naturally, not sure. Right now I've got him in uh, protector, so he's repelling physical to help out with that alter world farming. Repels fire, fantastic, weak to electricity. Be aware. As for the skills, the transferable binge eating, thematically appropriate, physical damage, single enemy, heals caster, 40% of damage dealt, power of one. 40. No pierce on this guy naturally, so you have to pick and choose where Mr. Abaddon can be truly effective. For the second skill, the passive death counter, following, uh, the following effect will activate when receiving a physical attack, 50% chance to counter said attack with a power of 150. Not bad, not terribly useful. I find the counterattack skills in this game to be largely, largely useless. At least these simple baseline ones, not some of the gotcha FU exclusive ones, but these single target ones. But hey, it's there. You might get a fun kill here or there with it. So, booyah. And for the main event and the reason we're all here today, the unique skill, Board of the Abyss, activates the following chain effect at the beginning of the first turn in a boss battle, removes all stat buffs of all enemies, and decreases the attack, defense, evasion, and accuracy of all enemies by 20% for three turns. And what this means, this is very specific, because this isn't just like an auto skill. Like, if you've got auto Tarakaja or something to that effect, it will pop off depending on who goes first in the battle, right? So if you're running a speedster team and you got auto Tarakaja going on, you got someone with auto Tarakaja, your team goes first, your auto Tarakaja kicks off first, followed by your enemy's auto skills. So if they've got someone who will auto Tarunda you twice, you're, you're still going in in the negatives. Whereas if they auto Tarunda you twice and you're going second, you got your auto Tarakaja up, you will go back to baseline because they debuffed you twice 
and you can only debuff once, if that makes sense. What this does is no matter if you go first or second, this chain effect kicks off at the start of the first turn. So all the auto skills go off, yours, the enemies, and then this kicks in, wiping the enemy's buffs away and giving them the full debilitate, letting you pop off. Again, this only pops off when you're fighting a boss. So it's, it's a very, very unique little skill that just helps you, really helps you get the drop on some of those Kiwamis, some of those boss battles. Uh, these work in Brands of Sin on that last wave of Brands of Sin and all of them. And it's fantastic. It also works in Alter World and Physical Alter World because those are considered, though one of them is considered a boss character. So this is fantastic for that purpose. This guy's been around a long time. I still use him today quite regularly. Fantastic. I, I, I rank him. He, he's a five-star demon in my heart. If you level this thing up, you get an additional 20% to max HP. Hardly necessary, but hey, it's there if you want it to be, and more HP is never a miss. For the archetype skill, got him in the Elementalist for Repel Physical. This is for specifically for farming Alter World. This really comes in handy. And all of his other archetype skills, if memory serves, aren't all that great. So hey, a Repel Fizz, why not? As for the transferables, got him with good aim, plus 10% of physical hit rate because his accuracy is terrible. L terrible. If Sugakaja isn't up, if Secunde isn't on, do not attack with this guy because... Yikes. That's why I put all those points to agility. Gave him this to try and help out with that accuracy issue. So anything you can do to bolster his accuracy, get, get it done. But his main, his main feature comes with him just being there when the battle starts. So you could largely ignore his physical capabilities and still have him work quite well, getting you where you need to be, getting that good first jump on your bosses. And for the second one, I slapped Hades Blast onto him, specifically for Alter World farming. You need those sweep skills, and it needs to be economical to the point where he can pop off two. He needs to be able to double tap to make him, to take advantage of all eight turns of the the overbreak when it hits. You need enough MP. Well, you need a skill to that he's able to shoot off twice. So. 6 MP, you can use War Brands. If it costs 7 MP sweep, well, now you're going to need Divine Brands to ensure that you're able to tap, tap, and take advantage, full advantage of those over breaks. As for the Brands, I get them with the War Brands and the Speed Brands. Speed Brands, you probably want to swap, swap out with Aim Brands, depending on your party. For what I run in Brands of Sin, I needed just enough speed, just enough speed to outrun some of those boss, or some of the, not even the boss wave, but the, the middle wave, the second wave, was outspeeding me, so I had to perk up the speed just enough, just enough to get me first turns on all three of those waves. So I got it with the speed brands, but aim brands would not be a miss in this regard. Uh, if you wanted to make him a full-on support, Demon, you know, throw Luster Candy onto him so he auto debilitates everyone at the beginning of a fight. Then his turn comes around and he throws up the Luster Candy. Well, now you got the full Monty. You can go with Life Brands, and that is not a bad idea. But seeing as how I use him for Alter World, everyone needs to be physically engaged to get those overbreaks done in one. So that's why I go this particular route. But for bosses, Kiwamis, if you're using him for for those things, yeah, you can, you can make him just a full-blown support guy. Full-on life brands and then guard brands or ward brands or shield brands, depending on the physical or magical inclinations of whomever you're facing. As for the panels, panel 1 plus 5% to physical hit rate. Couldn't break double digits on a 4-star demon, heaven forbid, but any accuracy boost on this guy 
is greatly, greatly needed and appreciated. So go for this off rip, no questions. This is the one you're gonna want to focus on. Just, just get it. If you find it, if you got two extra dimensionals, go right for panel one. Panel two plus ten percent two critical hit rate. Always good for physical demons, but in Abaddon's case, he's not the the bulkiest of boys, not the hardest of hitters, not the thuggiest of thugs. So, hey, it's there. Cool. Not, not. Uh, I would hope for something a little, uh, a little, little, little better for that one. And panel three activates the following chain effect. When Lord of the Abyss is activated, inflicts physical damage, power of 50, three times on random enemies. A very disappointing panel three because, again, his physical, his physical performance isn't great no matter what you do. And it, this would have been far better if it was, okay, not only do you get debilitating your enemies, you get a luster candy on yourself. That would have been perfect. Just... You know, not only do you get the full debuff, you get the full buff. It only pops off in PvE bosses, so it's not going to break anything in PvP and get people all hot and bothered. Why? Just a random attack, physical, with a power of, total power of 150? Okay. Well, it's there. But again, this is, this is good in another way, in that you can roll with Abaddon here right out the box. If you happen to pull him, you only need him baseline to get the full functionality, really. Because again, his his creme de la creme is the Lord of the Abyss. It comes, it stays, you got it in one. So in that regard, that is a very, very, it's a, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. And before we wrap it up, let's check out other archetypes, though. Memory serves... Not much to write home about here. Where are you at, dog? I will find him eventually because I am very professional and good at what I do. I'm sure several of you have probably spotted him five times already, where I missed him. There we go. For the Aragami archetype, Hellfire. Fire, magic damage, two to four times on random enemies with the power of 55. Completely useless. His magic stat is uh, not worth mentioning. So giving him this is, well, thematically appropriate. Totally, totally useless. Get rid of that. For the Protector archetype, Necro Dogma. Inflicts almighty magic damage on all enemies and increases own party's defense by 20%. Interesting. Goes into what I was saying before about him being solely a support guy. And you get a tiny, tiny bit of of almighty damage there. But this would have been better served as being like war cry or something to that effect. It's something that gives you a double buff and doesn't cost you 8 MP to, to fire off. That's Oof. That's that's a cost. Necro Dogma costs 9 MP naturally. Archetype slot takes this down to 8. If you level this up, you can get it down to 7, but why would you? Probably far easier to transfer Debilitate onto him than to roll with this. Or some other, uh, not Debilitate, Luster Candy onto him. Or uh, any other of the skills that give you a double buff, you know, attack and defense, attack evasion and accuracy, defense evasion and accuracy, you know, like Nocturne, right? As for the Psychic Archetype, got Infernal Mask, minus 60% chance of receiving status ailments, and a great one for PvP, but he's not a PvP guy, and this will be very, very situational in what you will be using for whatever bosses you're facing. If they come with ailments, you can give him ward brands and usually not have to worry about it or set him beside someone, Daisujo, or Mother Mariah, who uh, can wipe ailments, just clean off you, no problem. So this, you're, you're going to be very limited with this. Well, it's a great skill overall for PvP purposes. For him, not so much. 
And finally, which we discussed before, Repel Fizz and the Elementalist slot, which I went with because I really didn't like all of these. And also, this is uh, good for that Alter World physical farming, which I still use him for today in 2022. And that about wraps it up for this loudmouth bastard. Uh, I've got the Captain America wingtips going, but that's not the real him. The real him is... Yes! Have a good one, Liberators. Don't get captured.